Hello friends, I'm Randy Eager with our new company Strategic Storm Internet Marketing. Why a new company? We've added more personnel, services, and new products to meet and exceed the market demand. We build and market your website strategies so that you don't have to. Welcome to our webinar, Digital Photo Tips That Will Make Your Listings Sizzle. We're going to be busy today. This webinar will demonstrate how you can take photos of your listings and will make them more compelling to your prospects. Our goal is to take photos that are warm, rich, and makes the prospect feel at home even before they've seen the photo. Let's get started this way. What you will learn today. With today's webinar, we'll be looking at an overview of what you'll need to accomplish for your photo taking skills, in addition to the four main ingredients of effective photography skills. And those areas are composition foundations, and that means all agents what they must know. Here, we'll go over the general composition issues that you'll need to know for both interior and exterior shots. We'll also tie in the tips the pros know to make a photo stand out. Now lighting is the subject for indoor and outdoor shots. Lighting is probably the least understood and the most abused aspect of home photos. We'll take a look at not only some simple lighting issues that will make a dramatic difference to more complex outdoor lighting techniques that the pros use to market those multi-million dollar listings. Using a wide-angle lens to enrich photos is also something that we need to take a look at. Another area of misuse is the failure to capture all of the elements of a room. A simple knowledge of wide-angle lenses or zoom to wide angle can make a huge difference in what the viewer sees in the room. Photo editing software ideas will touch up your photos. Finally, when you think you're done, you're not really done. Once you've taken a large sampling of photos, it's time to see how they look to the naked eye and make subtle improvements. You'll get some great tips here for everything from changing the feeling the home gives off to adding a nice blue sky to a cloudy day, to taking out those brown patches of grass, and much more. Selling a home these days means that it has to be marketed through the Internet, and for the home to be sticky on the Internet, photography is very important. Take your camera every time you visit the home. Nobody said that the photos you put up on the site have to remain forever. If you see a great shot that shows off the home, take it and change out the pictures. Small improvements lead to great results. Whether a professional or not, the importance of taking well-composed and exposed photos of real estate can't be understated. Using a few tried and true techniques can produce near professional looking images without the need to buy expensive equipment. As more and more buyers use the internet to find houses and sellers depend on internet marketing to sell houses, it's vital that agents take special care to take excellent real estate photos. The real estate photo is the key in attracting buyers to listings and convincing them that they should see the listing. We've all seen our honest share of terrible real estate photos. It's sadly not uncommon to see terrible real estate pictures include blurry images, dark rooms, people, animals, pets, the agent's car in the driveway, reflections of the person taking the picture in the mirror, or my favorite is pictures of a snow-covered house in July. <laughs> the agent is probably wondering why it still hasn't sold. Well, to keep your 
pictures that sell houses and have fantastic real estate photos you can use for your internet listings, property flyers, and newspaper ads, here are some simple tips of ways to take fantastic real estate pictures. Most importantly, you can't rush good photos. You may need to experiment with photographing your home at different times during the day to find the best light. When you look at pictures you've taken, you must have a critical eye as a potential buyer would. Make sure there are no straggling dirty dishes in the sink or dirty laundry in the hamper or things like this. One misconception is that the interior of your house is all buyers will want to see online. And that's simply not true. If a buyer doesn't like the look of the house on the exterior, they may never want to even see the interior. Curb appeal is essential. Pick up toys, trash cans, and hide out of the view of the camera. Landscaping should look fresh and inviting. If you have a few fix-it items to do to on the exterior, do them first. Oftentimes, sellers rush to take photos and this can be a negative in the end. Remember, you're marketing your home through your photographs, so make them great. Make a habit of checking the composition in the viewfinder or on the LCD prior to taking a photo. There are no hard and fast rules for composing real estate photos, but do keep in mind a few principles. Let's start with staging. Before taking a photograph, temporarily move distracting items from the scene, such as a car in the driveway, a garbage sign, even for sale signs sometimes will come into play. For interior shots, tidy up the room so it looks uncluttered. Take shots from different angles, so nothing obstructs an important part of the scene. Move slightly to the left or right or back a few steps before taking the photo. A cluttered house is almost as obnoxious as a dark house, so even if your home for sale often looks like a museum, move the furniture for pictures. The living room, for example, should contain only a couch, a love seat, a coffee table, and an entertainment center to be entirely effective. Move everything else into another room while you shoot, if not for later showings. Furthermore, a room with a color theme will always photograph better than one without. Also, remove all personal photos. The goal is to have potential buyers envision themselves living in your house. Your family's photos interfere with that process. Utilize the room's perspective. Watch for a line of windows, archway, stairway, to make an interesting and dynamic shot. Avoid large areas of nothing or the backs of couches. Use tabletops and their settings to lead into the rest of the room. Now that is dining to kitchen. Keep the camera parallel in both directions, only tilting down if no lines are near the side edges of the frame. If you're shooting a wall square on, make sure the camera is also perfectly parallel to the wall to avoid converging cornices and perspective distortion. Is there a fireplace? Make sure to highlight that feature if there is. Clean off the mantle and decorate it sparingly. Again, make sure to remove any personal photos too. You want the buyer to imagine that this could be their home. Less is more. Let that fireplace take all of the attention. Now concentrate on the main living areas. Bedroom photos don't mean much if they don't show much more than a bed. Unless there's something interesting like a pair of French doors with a view of a pool or something like that, forget the bedroom. Now let's start with the three basic elements of good compositional photography. These simple basics apply whether you're taking outside shots or indoors. 
photos don't have to be extravagant. The more simple, the easier it is on the eye. Although this first element seems, well, simple, it's harder than it seems at first blush. Professional photographers grew up on the rule of thirds. This means that you pay attention to your photo in three panels instead of always focusing on getting everything centered. Placement of your subject is huge. Finally, energy brings out the compelling nature of the home. Whether it's the compelling nature of the pool, the warm sunlight streaming through the windows, or the brisk energy of a home on a bright, sunny day, you'll get energy if you know what you're doing in this area. One of the biggest errors made by amateur photographers when taking a photo of a home is when they back up too far. Get right up close to the home so that you frame in just the home itself. You'll be taking lots of pictures, so make sure this is one of them. Make sure that in at least one of your photos you have a strong center of interest that draws the viewer in. This makes the shot more compelling and interesting. And take advantage of the color in a home when possible. However, sometimes, as you'll see here, you'll have the white stucco home where <laughs> there's no color. No problem. These types of homes show extremely well at dusk. Plus, as we'll get to later, you can use colored lights to subtly imbue color. Remember the rule of thirds. Try having the subject off-center. You'll find that oftentimes this makes the shot much more interesting. For example, in this shot, the home is in the left third and the sunset is in the right third. Nothing is in the center. So for this shot, you'll want to ask people, how would you like a home where you sit on the back patio, put your feet up on the rail, and just watch the sunset go down? What are you doing? You're painting a story. Use lines to lead the viewer to the subject. As we can see with this photo, we actually have two major sets of lines leading the eyes. The stair rail leads the eye down to the room, and the floor to ceiling windows lead the eye from ceiling to floor. The combination of the two focuses our eye to the room itself in a fairly dramatic way. Try unusual camera angles. As we'll be discussing in a bit, you'll want to take outside shots at an angle, inside shots from your knees or on ladders, and any other way other than eye level. Dramatic lighting adds energy and interest. Note how much more interesting this home is taken at dusk when the outside lights are on. Morning sunlight adds energy and warmth. Color has much to do with energy and how we feel about a photograph. Light greens and blues are cool colors and make us feel cool or cold. Dark rich blues and oranges are warm colors and make us feel warm. Another interesting thing is that you can build energy in a room simply by where you take the photo. If something is in the foreground of the photo, it builds depth and perspective. Note how this room looks even larger because of the back of the sofa being in the foreground. So what are the most important rooms to put on your photography list? Well, here's a list of the best rooms, but remember, only shoot them if they're outstanding. 1. The front view. 2. Living room. 3. Possibly a second living area or different angle of a living room. 4. Kitchen. 5. Formal dining. 6. Den or office. 7. Breakfast area. 8. Family room. 9. Backyard, garden, and patio area. 10. 
foyer, staircase, entry, or at least if they're noteworthy. 11. Master bedroom, if there is something interesting there. And 12. Any other intriguing aspects of the home. And don't forget to highlight great neighborhood aspects like a community pool or pretty park if that area is sufficient or if you have those sorts of things. Now, you're not just taking a picture of a thing here. As I mentioned before, you're telling a story. When you look through the lens, don't just see what's in the middle of the frame. Pay attention to the borders of a composition. Don't cut anything off at awkward angles and try to make your photos straight and level. Your goal should be to highlight the special features of a home that would turn a potential buyer's head and make them want to schedule an appointment to see the home. And if you can't do anything else, try not to show every nook and cranny. Unless you're featuring a multi-million dollar home, eight bedrooms, 30 acres or so forth, six to ten photos should be sufficient. This doesn't mean you should take elevation style pictures of everything. Definitely experiment with angles. Get up on a chair or down on your knees to find the most dramatic shot. Note how on this shot, the ceilings appear that much higher because it was shot with me on my knees. If you're photographing a tight area, use a wide-angle lens to capture more space. Vary your angles and take some time to do close-up details as well. If all the images are made the same distance away from the camera and directly at eye level, it'll be boring to click through very quickly. Fill your lens only with things that you think are attractive. If you're getting a lot of tangled computer wires or other eyesores in your frame, move the camera until you don't see them anymore. People don't want to see the corners of the bedrooms, living room, or kitchen. Instead, they want to see the entire room or at least as much of it as you can fit in one shot. In addition to taking the room at a glance shots of your home for sale, you should also showcase close-ups of the important stuff. The kitchen sink and appliances, for example, and the shower in the master bedroom are, well, they're appropriate. I'm not saying that buyers want to see the individual rings on your stovetop burners, but be realistic and liberal with the camera. Here are some simple photo tips for composing great pictures of a home. Photos are even more important in this digital age since 90% of home buyers start their search online. In this housing economy, having a beautifully professionally staged home is critical in order to compete. Here are some critical picture taking pointers to remember in general. One go for volume. With digital cameras, you can never have enough photos, so feel free to snap away. Plant yourself in every corner of the room and take the shot. Don't simply stand there and shoot. Get low or high on stairs, on a chair, on your knees, and so forth. You can later decide on the best 6 to 10 photos based upon the home you're selling. 2. Turn on the lights. Every light in the room must be on and your blinds or drapes should be open. Indoor light has a photographic quality all its own that adds warmth and color, which adds a rich effect that emotionally draws in a buyer. Now, there are certain cases where we're going to suggest that you not do this, but in general, all lights on is good. Number three, turn off the flash. Take a picture with a flash but always take one without the flash, which will usually be your inevitable first choice shot. Why? Because the flash adds a hard light quality, whereas removing the flash forces your camera to draw in as much natural and artificial light as possible. It gives it a warm and comfortable glow to the shot, which buyers can respond to. A photographer's trick is to steady your arms against your body, specifically pushing your upper arms to your chest as you shoot. 
At the same time, spread your legs wide as you have made now a tripod effect. Number four, always review every shot. Digital cameras allow us to review the shot in the viewfinder after it's taken, so make sure you do this as well. Number five, go green. Savvy realtors know that the trick to having and getting a great backyard shot is to shoot from behind some greenery back at the house at the far corner of the yard. Number six, don't center everything. As we mentioned, remember the rule of thirds. Create interest by positioning focal points to the left or right rather than the center. Number seven, shoot for magic hours. An hour or two after the sun rises and before it sets is when the light is its softest, warmest, and most flattering. Number eight, avoid backlighting. Make sure that the light from windows is coming from the side or behind you to avoid glare. Number nine, shoot from different vantage points. Squat low or climb the stairs to take a variety of shots from different angles, as we've mentioned before. And number 10, it's in the details. Look at every detail of the photograph to, and make sure that some of the emotional connection comes out. You may zoom in to get special effects. Change the perspective for exterior shots. If you shoot the home from the traditional front on shot, it's generic. Be creative and make the pictures memorable. A slight change of angle improves the overall presentation of the house. Less driveway, front doors are showing, and a few tree branches in the upper right foreground add some depth to the photo. Here's a few hints to remember. Try to show the roof line. Move your viewpoint back or up if needed. Minimize the less attractive aspects of the house, the garage, any permanent signage, fences, and so forth. Wet down the brick patio and concrete pool surrounding it and avoid it being too bright in the photo. Wetting it down also brings out the rich color in the brick. Don't be afraid of the shade. Prospective buyers will want to see what's been done with the landscaping, and those with children will feel better knowing there's a place for the kids to play. House pictures should be as well-rounded as possible. Strive for even lighting. Professionals use strobe lights to brighten the dark spots. One of the mistakes that amateur photographers make is to shut all the blinds and turn on every artificial light. Don't shoot when sunlight is streaming in from the windows, and we're going to show you examples of this. The easiest time to do internal shots of a display house is generally around the middle of the day. This is for two reasons. Color balance, which can be particularly blue in the morning and evening, and contrast to avoid excessive direct light on and around the windows. In many situations, using existing ambient and artificial light can be more than adequate. This includes rooms with two or more sources of daylight or rooms too small to hide lighting such as bathrooms. Regardless of the subject, start by turning off any existing lights to evaluate the proportion of daylight to artificial illumination. This can be easily accomplished using an incident light meter. Don't discount the use of existing lights altogether as some services don't show the lights as well such as wood flooring and furniture. Also keep an eye out for other forms of artificial light pre-existing in the home. Fluorescent tubes are always to be avoided, as are energy-saving lamps that flicker when they turn on. If you take a lot of inside photos, consider getting a camera with a hot shoe, so that an ex external flash can be used. 
External flashes are much more versatile than tiny built-in flashes. Many can bounce the flash off a wall, off a ceiling, and diffuse the light. Photograph the interior on a bright but overcast day. This prevents the streams of stark sunlight from entering the room. Get the room well lit, even when using a flash. How about to enable an acceptable depth of field while maintaining good contrast in the image? To balance the internal and external light levels so as to show the view through the window and not have to overexpose completely is also a good idea. The window will look more realistic if slightly overexposed. The use of a flash can be particularly effective to balance a dark foreground with a bright background. For example, a window light. It can also help to light through a doorway and give a sense of life and light to another room. Of course, an issue dear to my heart of any photographer is reflections, and interior photography is no exception. Apart from the obvious dangers of windows, look for nasty highlights in TV screens, pictures, and even silverware on a table. Note that on this shot, the reflection has been done effectively and on purpose to portray an angelic reflection. Dusk is a great time to photograph windows. Low natural light will allow you to take photos that aren't blown out by midday sun. The biggest problem with shooting a room with a window is that the camera will automatically adjust for the lighting based on the brightest spot in the photo, which is normally the light coming into the window. You can compensate for this, however. To overcome this, the light between the outside and inside needs to be more equal. Take the photo when the outside is not so bright at either sundown, sunrise, or when it's overcast. Normally, you'll get the best photos with the flash on the camera set to off and all the inside lights turned on. Most cameras give you the option to have the flash on, off, or set to automatic. Experiment and try some shots with these different settings. To avoid making your room look dark while still capturing an outside view, you'll need to wait until an overcast day. Ideally, interior photos will capture both the room details and outside views from any windows. Blinds and curtains should be open to allow natural light to come in. However, when you take photos, the camera will automatically adjust focus to the room's brightest spot, usually windows, making the room features appear dark. Be careful to put these bright spots away from the center of the photo. And we're going to show you how to do this. All right, let's have some fun now. Here is a photograph of a fireplace mantle with a nearby sliding glass door. Note how the exposure is all wrong. The fireplace is too dark and the outside is too light. To the camera, all is well because it's compensated for the strong outdoor lighting or the hot spot. Now, let's take a look at our second shot. No, this shot hasn't been retouched. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see that from either side, if you look at either side of the photo, it's a different shot. So why does the second shot look better? Because we've tricked the camera. What I've done is to stand in the exact same spot, yet before I made the shot, I moved the camera level, yet pointing over to the darker fireplace area, and gently, partially squeezed the trigger. This set the camera settings, telling the camera that it will need a flash to lighten up the area. Now I moved back to my original spot and pushed the trigger the rest of the way down. This way, the camera using the automatic settings used to flash and has compensated nicely, even for the outside area. Of course, most cameras now allow you to force flash whether the camera thinks it needs it 
or not. A similar lighting area for hotspots is the flash painting. Here you see a photo of my son. It was taken in the early evening as the sun was setting. Due to the fact that the sun wasn't set all the way yet, enough light was present to tell the camera that it didn't need the flash. Thus, I get an average photo of the foreground and an average photo of the background. But if I want to make a significant difference in the photo, I set the camera to force flash. By having the subject matter closer than the light source, which in this case is the sun, it not only enriches the foreground due to the painting effect, but I also get a much richer effect of the sunset since the flash can't obviously be thrown that far to light up the mountain. As for photos of the outside, a sunny day with a blue sky usually gives you the best photo, providing there are no undesirable dark spots due to shaded areas. You generally get the sun behind you. If the front of the house faces north, it may be best to take the photo on a cloudy day, especially if it's a brick house or has dark sighting. The bright areas of the sky versus the unlit dark front give you the same problem as inside photos with overly bright windows. When shooting the outside of the home, a bright day will give you the best results. Do, however, make sure that the sunlight is not washing out the face of the home, which will make the home elevation difficult to discern. Make sure the light from windows is coming from the side or behind you to avoid glare. Now let's take a look at the right lighting for dusk e external lighting. Tungsten balanced settings just after dusk is particularly pleasing. At the right moment, it'll look very moody and appropriate, evoking a feeling of warmth inside, contrasting with the blue coldness outside. The big advantage is the ease of lighting as there is no dilemma with mixed color temperatures. Reflections are easy to spot and existing lighting complements what you bring in. Personally, I feel that nighttime internal shots suit the more expensive and dramatic homes with extensive halogen lighting and high quality finishes and furniture. Cheaper homes with domestic grade bulbs tend to look better when lit with daylight and maybe a little fill-in flash as previously outlined. Try both techniques if you have the time and the budget. To photograph a display home external at dusk, you'll need heaps more preparation than shooting the same house during the day. The trick is to subtly light the building when the sky is a deep blue tone and not pitch black. I personally prefer it when the house faces away from the sunset at a slight angle, which gives you a nice gradation in the sky. A little cloud in the sky can be an assist reflecting the last rays of sunlight and introducing some additional color into the sky. Of course, you'll have to work with what you've got. I suggest using tungsten halogen lights to give the foreground as they're cheap easy to use, and predictable. Very cheap options include those oh, $30 security lights from Kmart. They're 500 watts and a spotlight is also handy to highlight areas such as the detail in the roofing or let's say the portico. Having more than three lights can make the situation more confusing than necessary and increase the risk of over lighting the subject. Also bring a good ladder and tripod, lots of extension lights, and a few spare light bulbs for lamps inside the house. Set up a floodlight at each end of the house and a spotlight somewhere in the middle, leaving the heaps of slack in the cable so that they can't be seen by the camera. Camera positioning is often determined by environmental factors, for example, unmovable signage, flagpoles, fences, trees, and so forth. 
However, this can generally be improved by a high viewpoint, hence the ladder, slightly to the side of the home and opposite to the side where the garage is. You never want to put the garage as the main part of the house. Now it's a waiting game, and hopefully it'll all fall into place at the right moment. When you feel that the dusk is approaching, take an incident light reading from the subject's viewpoint. Compositional and light problems may be apparent and are easier fixed at this point than later when the light is falling down dramatically. So, do a series of shots every 10 minutes or so as the light is falling. If not, you might miss the magic moment when all is at the perfect balance and looks fantastic. While a wide-angle lens isn't required for taking real estate photos, using one can certainly be a plus since more of a scene can be captured than is possible with a standard width lens. Most compact cameras start with an equivalent of about 35 millimeter, but there are a number of models now available to have the equivalent of a 28 millimeter lens, which is truly a wide angle lens. Not only can more of an area be seen in the photograph with a wide angle lens, but wide angle allows you to stand closer to the subject and still fit in the frame. By moving closer, you can take photos free from unwanted foreground objects such as mailboxes, trees, and shrubs. Be careful. When taking photos of real estate using the widest lens angle of a digital camera, you'll often encounter barrel distortion. The wide angle lens position causes the edges of an image to look curved or skewed. Lines that you'd expect to appear perpendicular are not. To minimize barrel distortion, zoom in the lens closer and move back to get more of the subject within the frame. Watch the effects change on the LCD. Barrel distortion can be adjusted with many photo editing programs, though avoid distortion as much as you can at the time you take the shot. Consider using a software program such as well, Photoshop to touch things up. It's a way to eliminate telephone wires and electric wires that are in the shot. Ditto for punching up colors and obscuring some less desirable elements that may be in the photograph. Remember you're telling a story. The photos still may not win awards, but the key thing is to create an impression that this house will be someone's home. Remember, the end in mind, the goal of every picture is to sell the home. Even if you use an outside photographer, tell them the ideas you want to get across and target that market. Photos taken of scenes containing lines at angles or at a diagonal are prone to jaggies. Jaggies occur when lines are in high contrast to the background, such as a roof line against a clear sky. When a large image is reduced in size using a photo editing program with anti-aliasing, the jaggies should visually disappear. To help avoid jaggies when actually photographing subjects with strong angles, change your position or the distance you're standing from the subject. Take too many photos. You never know which ones you're going to have or which ones will be great on your computer screen. Sometimes shots that seem unimpressive during a shoot turn out beautifully. Photoshop can help us make images even better by adjusting color temperature, contrast, brightness, and <laughs> a million other things. If your horizon line is a bit crooked, rotate the image. If there is superfluous Im information in a photo, that isn't adding to its quality. Crop it out. A tight composition can sometimes get the point across better. Most cameras will allow you to choose the photo resolution.
Ideally, you'll want between 600 to 1280 pixels. With the higher the pixel number, the higher the photo quality. This will make your images shine when printing and editing instead of becoming blurry or distorted. Keep in mind that this is for print photos. Those taken for internet can be much lower in, in resolution. Watch closely. This is a lower resolution image that you may or may not be able to tell. But on the resolution for the internet, it is practically non-existent because the internet uses lower resolution photos. Think of every digital photo as being a mosaic of a tiny squares of varying colors. These tiny squares are called pixels. The more pixels, the clearer the photo. Digital photo sizes are measured by how many pixels wide by how many pixels high. 640 by 480 is the absolute largest that will ever be displayed by most MLS related websites. In fact, most photos on the internet are no bigger than 320 by 240. The problem is that high pixel cameras, oh let's say 5 megapixels and more, are getting more common and most people think that they'll get better photos on the internet if they send in photos with high megapixels. High pixel photos are good for enlarging to 8, and 8 by 10 prints or even poster size with high clarity but are pointless for the internet. All they do is create emailing problems. Now there's three quick ways to find out what the size of your photo is. Number one, if you're using Windows XP, you can simply move the little mouse over the photo icon and it should tell you the photo size. And it needs to be on your desktop or in the folder on your desktop and not a shortcut. Or, number two, right click on the photo icon and choose properties, then select the summary tab. Or, number three, double click on a photo, open it, and then right click on the photo, and left click on properties. It should tell you how many pixels wide and high the photo is. Your digital photography shopping list, of course, the first thing you need is a camera. If you don't already have a digital camera, go out and buy one. You can get a good one now for under $200. Don't waste your money on disposable cameras and don't expect to get any decent pictures out of even things like your smartphone, even though they're getting better and better now. I use a Kodak EasyShare M580 digital camera for most of my work. If you plan to use 35 millimeter, make sure your camera has manual exposure and focus override and is capable of long timed exposures. Other good cameras are made by Nikon and Canon. Lenses. It's very useful to have at least two wide-angle lenses to cover most situations. On the 35mm format, you can't go wrong with a 20mm and 28mm or 35mm lens as well. Kodak and Nikon both have high-quality, expensive 17-35mm to 35 millimeter zoom lenses to consider, but you're probably better off putting that money into some decent lighting gear. Fixed focal length lenses tend to be faster, better quality, and make you a more dis disciplined and careful photographer anyway. Lights. As previously mentioned, high power monoblock or self-contained flash units are best for this kind of work. A couple of 1000 or 1500 watt second light heads should suffice, but don't forget to budget for some decent stands and white umbrellas as well, if you're going to go to that extent. Soft boxes are, well, they're nice, but can be extremely bulky on location. 
for dusk external shots, a set of cheap tungsten lights is generally sufficient. Lights with a broad, even light and cheap replacement bulbs are the best. Internet marketing has been left to the elite. Top agents understand the two facets of Internet marketing. First, they have optimized websites, making them visible to their prospects on Google. Second, they have compelling websites that make the prospect want to stay and give their information. The vast majority of these agents use the gold SEO plan. It puts their website at the top of Google. And just some of the features in the Gold SEO plan are blog site creation and optimization, social bookmarking site submissions, competitor research analysis, link building, plus 15 more optimization features. For years, this has been our most popular SEO plan at $35.95, but it's yours for a limited time if you mention this video for only $19.95. But that's not all. Here's another idea. Allow me to introduce the Power Site, the feature perfect website, the first website to put the power of a 10 year study finding the 20 most compelling website features to get you leads leading to sales. The Power Site is the most feature rich, compelling website on the market today. Some of the features in the Power Site include the gold SEO plan. That alone is a $3,600 value. A professional rotating feature property slideshow. Subscribe to new listings or the new listing alerts. Video trailer inserts plus 16 more compelling features. And because it includes the gold SEO plan, it's our best value. And all of this for only $19.95. Call us today and ask to see available live sites and testimonials. For more information and to order, call 800-277-1316. Use your smartphone to click on the QR barcode shown or order online at ourpowersites.com. Use your credit card to secure these special offers. Don't delay. Call 800-277-1316. 1316 now. Plus, if you call today, not only can you get these special prices, but you can also get our bundled pricing for both products for only $29.95. This limited time offer will only be available for those who mention this video offer. Remember the words of Theodore Roosevelt. In any moment of decision, the best thing that you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing that you can do is nothing. Well, the decision is yours to make. We hope to hear from you and have a great day.